In this video, we're reviewing how umpires should enforce obstruction and the base awards that come with it in NFHS baseball. For those of you more familiar with the OBR rules, there's some key differences in high school baseball that we have to be aware of to enforce this properly. Now, if you haven't already, be sure to check out our last video explaining what obstruction is and the difference in obstruction between the NFHS and OBR levels. You can find a link to that video in the video description. And again, I wanna stress that it's a key difference in the definition and enforcement of obstruction between the NFHS and OBR levels. And if you're not aware of these key differences, it could make a big impact on your game. So in this video, let's review the enforcement of obstruction and we'll run through this week's case plays. And if you wanna see how well you can do on the quiz before we review it in this video, you can find a link in the video description. Hi everyone, Patrick Farber here with GHSA Baseball Umpire Development and Umpire Classroom, where we help umpires to develop their knowledge and skills. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe. And if there's any video ideas that you would like to see, be sure to leave your ideas in the comment section below. Okay, let's get started. First, let's review the rule. Rule 8, Section 3, Base Running Awards. Article 2. When a runner is obstructed while advancing or returning to a base, the umpire shall award the obstructed runner a minimum of one base beyond his position on base when the obstruction occurred. The umpire shall award the obstructed runner and each other runners any additional bases that would nullify the obstruction. Okay, so let's review the points of emphasis when it comes to understanding this obstruction rule. First, obstruction in NFHS baseball is always a delayed dead ball. This means we're never going to kill play even if the obstruction occurs to a runner that a play is being made on. Instead, we're going to wait until all playing action has ended, at which point we'll call time and award bases as necessary. This brings us to the second point, which is the obstructed runner must be awarded at least one base beyond the last legally occupied base at the time they were obstructed. And note that the obstructed runner being awarded a base may force a preceding runner to advance as well. For example, let's take a play R1 and R2 with no outs. F1 attempts a pickoff at first base and the first baseman drops their leg blocking the entirety of the bag before receiving the ball. This would be obstruction and by rule, R1 would be awarded the next base from their last legally occupied base, which was first, meaning they'll be awarded second. Since R2 is already on second base, because R1 is awarded second, R2 will be forced to advance to third base. Next, the third point is that if the obstructed runner at least advances to the next base from where they were when the obstruction occurred, and all runners, including the obstructed runner, advance as far as the umpires believe they would have advanced had the obstruction not occurred, then the obstruction will be ignored. That said, the fourth point comes from the definition. Whenever we have obstruction, the ball must become dead at the end of the playing action and will remain dead for the awarding of bases. And the last piece of information you need for enforcing obstruction comes from rule 8-4-2. It says, any runner is out when he initiates malicious contact. Malicious contact always supersedes obstruction. This means that even though obstruction may occur on a play, if the runner tries to initiate malicious contact, for example, by lowering their shoulder on a fielder standing in the base path without the ball, the ball would become immediately dead and the runner will be called out and the obstruction will be ignored. Okay, so now that we've reviewed the main rules around obstruction, let's go ahead and go through this week's case plays. Case play number one, R2 and R1 are on second and first respectively, when B3 beats out an infield hit. R2 advances two and pass third towards home. In a rundown, F5 obstructs R2. However, R2 gets back to third safely and finds R1 there. F5 tags R2 and R1 with the ball while both are on third base. Is this A, R2 is awarded third, R1 is returned to second. B, R2 is awarded third, R1 is out. C, R2 is awarded home, R1 is awarded second. D, R2 is awarded home, R1 is awarded third. 
or E, R2 is awarded home, R1 is out. The correct answer here is D, R2 is awarded home and R1 will be awarded third. R2 is awarded home because the obstruction occurred between third and home and by rule, since third was their last legally occupied base, they have to be awarded home. Since they were awarded home, we're going to ignore that two runners were trying to occupy third base since R2 shouldn't have even been there. So as a result, we'll let R1 stay at third base. Case play number two. While B1 is moving towards second base on a hit to right center field, F6, who does not have the ball in his possession, fakes a tag on B1 as they are coming into second base. The umpire judges that if the fake tag had not occurred, B1 still would not have reached third base safely. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is obstruction, B1 is awarded second, or C, this is obstruction, B1 is awarded third? The correct answer here is B, this is obstruction, and R1 will be awarded second base. As we reviewed in last week's video, we know that fake tags are always going to be considered obstruction under NFHS rules. And since R1 had not yet reached second base, the base that the rules require them to be awarded is second base. And since in the umpire's judgment, the runner was not going to make it to third base, even if the fake tag had not occurred, then we're just going to leave the runner at second base. Case play number three. While B1 returns to first base after a base hit and rounding the bag, F3, who does not have the ball, fakes a tag on B1. The umpire judges that if the fake tag had not occurred, B1 would have only been able to stay at first base. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is obstruction, B1 is awarded first, or C, this is obstruction, B1 is awarded second? The correct answer here is C. This is obstruction and B1 will be awarded second base. And again, the reasoning for the award of second base is that by rule in NFHS rules, any obstruction is going to require that the obstructed runner be awarded at least one base from their last legally occupied base. Since B1 had just rounded first base, first base was the last legally occupied base and the fake tag being obstruction means that we're going to have to reward them with second base. Case play number four. With one out, R2 on second and R1 on first, B4 hits a ground ball directly to F1, who throws to F5 for the force out on R2 at third. F5 then throws to F3 in time to put out B4 at first base. During the play, F6 obstructed R2, preventing him from reaching third base. Is this A, the play stands, B, R2 is awarded third, R1 is awarded first, B4 is out, C, R2 is awarded third, R1 is awarded second, B4 is awarded first, D, R2 is out, R1 is awarded second, B4 is awarded first, or E, R2 is awarded third, R1 is awarded second, B4 is out. The correct answer here is E. R2 is going to be awarded third because they're the runner that was obstructed and that obstruction occurred between second and third and they have to be awarded one base. For that reason, they're going to be awarded third. Now, remember that in high school rules, this is a delayed dead ball, even though they were making a play to retire R2. For that reason, R1, who will have advanced to second on this play, will get to stay at second base but the out on B4, who was not obstructed during the play, is going to remain in place. This leaves us with R2 at third, R1 at second, and B4 being the only out on this play. Case play number five. R1, who is on first base, attempts to steal second base. F2 does not make a throw. F6 fakes a tag on R1 coming into second. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is obstruction, R1 is awarded second, or C, this is obstruction, R1 is awarded third? The correct answer here is B, this is obstruction, and since R1 had not yet acquired second base, their award on the play is going to be second base. Case play number six. R1, who is on first base, 
attempts to steal second base. F2 throws the ball into center field. F6 fakes a tag on R1 coming into second. Is this A, this is legal, B, this is obstruction, R1 must be and can only be awarded second, C, this is obstruction, R1 must be and can only be awarded third, or D, this is obstruction, R1 must be awarded at least second, but could be awarded additional bases. The correct answer here is D. Since R1 had not yet acquired second base, by rule, they must at least be awarded second. However, if the umpire believes that had the obstruction not occurred, they would have rounded second and safely made it to third, then the umpire can award third base as well. Case play number seven. With no outs, R2 is obstructed after rounding third. B3 then interferes with F3. Is this A, R2 is returned to second, B3 is out. B, R2 is returned to third, B3 is out. C, R2 is awarded home, B3 is out. Or D, R2 is out, B3 is awarded first. The correct answer here is C. R2 has to be awarded home because they were obstructed after having touched third base. Since that made third base their last legally occupied base, by rule they have to advance at least one base and since the obstruction occurred before the interference, that means sending them to home. And since B3 did commit interference on the play, B3 is going to be out. Case play number eight. With R1 at first, B2 hits a sharp line drive down the line into the right field corner. After he rounds second base, F6 reaches out and clotheslines R1, bringing him to the ground. As R1 is on the ground, B2 passes R1 and is thrown out at third base. The contact is malicious and will have F6 ejected from the game. Is this A, this is obstruction and a delayed dead ball, R1 is awarded at least third and potentially home, the out on B2 stands. B, this is obstruction and a delayed dead ball, R1 is awarded at least third and potentially home, B2 is awarded second. C, this is obstruction and a delayed dead ball, R1 is awarded home, B2 is awarded third. D, this is obstruction and an immediate dead ball. R1 can only be awarded the next base, third. B2 is awarded first. Or E, this is obstruction and an immediate dead ball. R1 is awarded at least third and potentially home if the umpire judges that would nullify the obstruction malicious contact. B2 is awarded at least first and any additional bases the umpire judges they would have made had the malicious contact not occurred. The correct answer here is E. Yes, this is obstruction, but because we have malicious contact, the ball by rule must become dead when that occurs. Since this is an automatic dead ball, we can ignore the rest of the play and instead we'll have to award bases according to the obstruction rules. First, let's take R1. Since R1 had touched second base and was then obstructed, R1 is awarded at least third base, but as the umpire, if we judge that they would have made it to home, then we can award them home as well. And B2 on this play is going to be awarded at least first base, but as the umpires, we can award them additional bases that we believe they would have made it to had the obstruction not occurred causing a dead ball. So there you have it everyone, our review of base awards for obstruction in NFHS baseball rules. If you found this video helpful, be sure to check out the rest of our videos and to sign up for our weekly rules quiz in the video description. Thanks again for watching and as always, I look forward to seeing you on the field.